poems tonight, um, all poems that I've written this year, and one as recently as this afternoon. Um, they represent three verse forms. I have free verse, I have blank verse, I have rhymed metered verse. So maybe there's something here you will enjoy. Um, the first one is the free verse poem, and this is actually one that I put together when I was working with Faith. Uh, uh, she was teaching a class at the college, and uh, oh, one of the things that we did was used photographs and let those inspire us to generate poems. And I had a picture that I took that I uh, loved uh, of my grandson, Patrick. And it's a picture of him. It's a close-up of his little face and framed with his little blonde hair, and he's blowing the fluff off a dandelion. And it's just a, it's, it's one of those, probably, it's probably one of the be five best pictures I've ever taken in all my years. And I love that picture, so I used that. And it made me think about the William Wordsworth poem, uh, The World is Too Much With Us. It's all about how we don't observe nature enough. We don't appreciate nature enough because we get too caught up in things of the world. So this one's called Before the World Catches Up. Blowing white fluff off a dandelion stem is one of those things you know to do innately. Like writing with a pudgy finger on windows where water condenses to make a slate just for you. A kid thinks nothing of the weed-filled yard, the smudged glass, but only of pure pleasures like these. Decorating a picture window with ABCs and stick men and watching dandelion seeds loft lazily up up, upward against a cloud-filled sky. So thanks, Faith, for that inspiration. This next one, another short poem. I actually got the seed of the idea for this one at uh, Senior Writers Group, so some of you there might have heard this one. This is a 100-syllable poem. It consists of 10 lines of 10 syllables. Hopefully that makes 100. Um, so uh, anyway, it's, uh, I guess you'd call it blank verse then, a 10-line blank verse poem. And Faye, our, uh, our teacher there, challenged us to write a poem without focusing on the sense of sight. So this one's called Just the Birds. I close my eyes and I hear just the birds, a solo first, and then a chorus swells, a red-breast maestro setting tone and pace from his director's stand upon a branch. With open eyes, the music fades away to only faint and random background notes. The neighbor's yellow cat stalks prey so loud, her laundry flaps so noisily on the line. I close my eyes against these raucous sights, and when I do that, I hear just the birds. So those are a couple poems from earlier this year in situ that come from situations where I found myself with some of you, uh, other writers, and that's, of course, always an inspiration. This one, uh, this poem that I wrote actually this afternoon, is called The Christmas Secret. And um, if you know me very well, and some of you do, you know that I, I don't like the Christmas season. I'm sorry to say that, but I, I don't, and I never have, uh, except when I was a little kid and didn't have to do anything. Uh, that was okay. But every year I get caught up in all the things that Christmas demands, seems to demand, or we think Christmas demands that we do. And this year, when Thanksgiving came at the end of November and there wasn't that week in November to kind of brace myself, I really noticed that I, uh, I missed that. And it's, it, it was especially urgent this year. So I started out writing with that in mind. Something kind of delightful happens about mid poem, and that's what I love about writing. One of the things I love most is that 
you don't really know what's going to happen. You can have an idea, you can start with an idea, but sometimes it just writes itself at some point, and that is really uh, one of the neatest experiences I think a, a person can have is to, to experience that. So this is the Christmas secret. This is my rhymed metered poem. Thanksgiving's barely over. The turkey's barely done. Now Santa's snuck up on me and it ain't no fun. I'm sabotaged by details. There's clutter in a heap. I'm frozen under snow that feels like three feet deep. Tangled up in tinsel, buried under lights, I'm feeling claustrophobic and I can't breathe right. A star goes on the Christmas tree, but I can't reach the top cause I'm babysitting babies while their moms go shop. <laughs> Shoved around at grocery stores, trampled at the mall, I've used up all of my, I've, I'm sorry, I've used all of my nine lives up and that ain't all. Christmas cookies make me hyperventilate and pant. I burned myself and used up one whole aloe vera plant. <laughs> There's cards that need addresses, letters needing scent, and hubby with the checkbook yelling, too much money spent. <laughs> I need to take a break from this and sip a glass of wine. Chardonnay's my favorite, but they all taste fine. Some burgundy, some Riesling, and now some white Merlot. The little glass goes upside down and down the hatch they go. Why, oh why'd I ever pick this piddly little glass? A gallon jug would better make this bad mood pass. Yes, wine goes down quite smoothly with a bunch of little sips. What's this? That's kind of funny. I no longer feel my lips. <laughs> My heart no longer races. I no longer feel it throb. So best forget the wine and get my butt back to the job. I nestle mid the holly. I wrestle with the wreath. Then grin and find some mistletoe is stuck between my teeth. There's ribbon on the ceiling, but paper nowhere near. Oops, I think I see it draped around the chandelier. I try to light a candle and catch my couch on fire. I feel just like Aeneas watching Dido's funeral pyre. <laughs> the ornaments are broken. They jumped right from the box. And why, up on the mantel, have I hung my shoes and socks? A and what's that right beside them? Is that my underwear? Good grief. I sure hope someplace I can find another pair. I have to go outside real soon and it could be quite drafty. So I'll make some from this tree skirt. I've always been quite crafty. <laughs> well, I don't recall so much at all what happened here last night. The living room's a shambles and the fireplace a fright. My eyesight's looking fuzzy for some reason and Oh boy, my head feels like a log that someone split for Yuletide joy. My tummy feels quite queasy and just, how can it be that I'm sprawled out in my living room atop a Christmas tree? There's a tree skirt round my ankles. How it got there, I've no clue, but maybe we could keep last night between just me and you. Thanks.